On this episode of Curry Explained, we're introducing our new Curry Apex Full Floating Rear End. Hey, what's up guys? Thanks for watching Curry Explained. Today, we're gonna introduce our new Apex Floater Rear End. A full float rear end is a axle shaft that's splined on both sides that doesn't put load on an axle flange. This is the next evolution in the legendary nine inch rear end. At some point, we're gonna have to get better at what we build because we're gonna put up with autocross cars, race cars, cars with big wheels and tires, or just something new and clean for the builder out there who wants a nice installation and something that just works really well and satisfies the demand that today's cars put on the rear end. At the heart of the Apex floater is a new CNC machine housing end. Now this machine housing end we make 100% in-house. We designed it around using a C7 Chevy Corvette unit bearing. Now a C7 Chevy Corvette unit bearing is 33 spline. It comes with 12 millimeter studs, but we went ahead and actually made this upgradable to half inch studs. Now you know a Corvette's wheel bolt pattern is typically five on four and three quarter. This is going to also be available five on four and a half and five on five. 33 spline on the unit bearing, well, we're gonna go up to a 35 spline axle shaft on the inside to the carrier side. So it's upgradable to the 35 spline third members, or we're also gonna make an axle shaft that goes from the 33 spline down to a 31 spline third member. So depending on your horsepower or application, there's a lot of room there for you to grow or to basically spec it based on the application. You'll notice something really cool about the, uh, the housing end. We've designed this to accept the factory pigtail from a Corvette C7. What's that gonna allow you to do? Well, it's gonna allow you to dial in ABS, speed sensor, or traction control. So if you guys are gonna be building something that you really wanna compete and, and apply traction control using a aftermarket ECU, this is capable of doing that. If you decide that you don't wanna use the pigtail, we actually make a plug that's gonna plug this up as well. Now, we've all struggled with leaking axles. And basically, what has been the problem with that? Well, the incorrect installation of brake kits and the preload on the seal, this eliminates that. What we're doing is we're actually machined a section inside the housing end to take a 35 spline seal that presses right in at the outside of the tube. It's easily serviceable if you needed to replace a seal or if you needed to take out your axle shaft, you remove the unit bearing and the seal's right there and available for you to repair if needed. But by putting it all the way out on the housing end, no more problem with leaking axles because you're not, you don't have a traditional axle shaft out there with the flange on it. To retain the axle in the unit bearing, we're machining a new cap. It's also got an O-ring groove on it. And you'll notice this set screw. The set screw actually screws into the end of the axle shaft, holding it in to the outside of the rear end. This is actually machined to accept a 36 millimeter socket. So to tighten it down or remove it, it's easily done from the outside once you just remove the rotor. To keep this all together, what we've done is we've teamed up with Willwood and we've designed a backing plate around their electric park brakes. Their electric park brake kits come with a backing plate that's a full 360 like this, and we've modified it and machined it to look more something like this. We did the cutout at the top so that you can clear your uh, ABS sensor or speed sensors, and we've machined it so that it fits the housing end and bolts right to it. What's cool about the Willwood electric park brake is it's also clockable. You can move it full 360 degrees mounting so that it can clear suspension components wherever you might have the rotor or brake lines. It's gonna allow you to wire this in and uh, make it look nice and clean. The electric park brakes from Willwood, if you've never used these before, they just work. No more cable driven parking brakes, uh, although there is an option if you still wanted a mechanical. But the electric park brake is a huge upgrade. It's the next step in the evolution of parking brakes. And from personal experience, this works really well. Now the Apex floater is not only available with our F9 style rear end, but is going to be available on our Centurion notch and our hot rod style of housings. So depending on the application, whether it be a hot rod, a street rod, a pro touring car, a muscle car, or a autocross race car, we will have a center section that this is adaptable to. It's also gonna be available on all of our muscle car and truck style 
rear ends that we already sell. So whether you're already purchasing a C10 or a muscle car or a hot rod that you wanted to do something new and improved, it is going to be available for that application in our crate rear end program. To highlight some of the components that go into the new Curry Apex floater, again, the housing end, 100% machined in-house out of uh, billet steel. Uh, what we've done is we've designed this to accept a C7 Corvette unit bearing. What's a C7 Corvette unit bearing? A C7 Corvette unit bearing looks like this. This looks a little bit more familiar to some of you guys because uh, there is this in a one-ton application for like say our race stuff for the Jeep side and for the off-road trucks. A little bit big though when it comes to the car applications for the street. So the C7 unit bearing, uh, we're gonna modify and actually install half-inch studs. It does come stock with 12 millimeter studs, so that is an option as well. And we're working on five on four and a half and five on five bolt patterns for you Mustang and Chevy C10 guys. Inside of this is gonna be spline 33 spline, that's factory Corvette, plenty strong, and is pretty much the same diameter as 35 spline. So when we machine an axle shaft, we've considered that, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna machine a shaft like this, that is 35 spline on one side and 33 spline on the other. So that basically, it's gonna to mate to the unit bearing and engage the center section. Now, if you already have a 31 spline rear end, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and go from 33 spline down to 31 spline. So depending on your horsepower application, or if you're gonna be building a race car or just a street car, we'll be able to dial you in either way. To solve the problem with leaking axles, we're gonna be using a seal, looks just like this, that actually gets pressed in into the housing end now. So no more internal seals. The gear oil will trickle down to the tube. However, it won't exit the tube anymore because we're gonna have a nice seal in there that's gonna be pressed into the housing end here and that the unit bearing sandwiches down. You're not gonna have problems with gear oil coming past that. To finish it off, we've machined a nice cap that fits right in here. That's going to encapsulate the axle shaft as well with the set screw. It's also O-ringed just for an additional seal. So there's no way that gear roll is gonna get past any of that. So no more problems with leaking axles. For the backing plate, now this is the Willwood backing plate that comes for all of their off the shelf electric park brake and manual park brake kits that have a two and a half inch offset. What we've done when we designed this floater is we've designed it around off the shelf brake kits that are available from Willwood. This is not a specific one just to Curry. It is something that is off the shelf, but we do machine the backing plate to look something like this. So when you purchase the new floater, the backing plate will be modified. The rest of the kit is an off the shelf kit from Willwood. We machine this now so that it slides right over the housing end, clears the pigtail for the ABS and speed sensor, and would still allow you to mount the unit bearing right on top, just like that. So welded to the housing end, you're basically going to see this complete right onto the axle tube. Once assembled and on the rear end, you have the ability to still clock your caliper all the way around the backing plate and your parking brake all the way around the backing plate. And what's nice about this is with the bracketry that already comes in the kit from Willwood, it's completely clockable around the rotor so that you can put it wherever it may clear your frame, your suspension, or your coilovers. Plenty of options, a lot of versatility, and uh, this is a really nice parking brake if you guys do upgrade to the electric park brake. From personal experience, this works super well. Thank you for tuning in to Curry Explain today. If you have any questions in regards to what is the best style of rear end for your application, please call us, send an email, or leave a comment below. Thanks again, guys.